you dress like a kid, you'll be treated like a kid. Dress the part, you gain so much. As soon as you address a customer, you're immediately being put in a box. That is how humans work. I've talked about this a lot. I'm gonna to continue to talk about this. Do not fight human psychology. Learn to work with it. So every time you engage with someone, you're immediately getting put in a box. When you're approaching somebody, what is the box they're immediately putting you in? You're here to sell something. Really predicated upon self-preservation and making sure that you aren't taken advantage of, most people, when they when you get put in that box, what do they think? Be skeptical, and it's fear. That's, that's humans, that's not just sales, that's Every guy knows this. How do guys know this? You hear a girl and it's the same fucking thing. You gotta deal with it. Which is why, generally, men have an advantage in sales in the beginning because for a lot of guys, they've been taking no's their entire fucking life. Right? They just got good at, at learning it. In the game of influence and building rapport, you know, five to 10 seconds at most to get the fuck out of that box. And how you do that is not fighting human psychology, it's working with it. And you wanna create disassociation. Raise your hand if you've had a customer tell you, man, I never let you guys sell me and I let you sell me. What if that, if you heard that, I would reverse engineer what the fuck you did, or let them know. I'm just curious, thank you for saying that, by the way. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, what, how did I stand out? What, a, what about me stood out? Well, you seemed likable. I, seemed, I felt like I could trust you. You led with questions. You seemed like you really cared about my experience. If you ever hear that, reverse engineer it because so much of success is learning how to repeat successful behavior. You don't know what you're doing. We'll say you are unconsciously competent. It's like groping in the dark. You don't really know when you're winning and when you're not or why it's working and when it's not. But if you have a good experience with somebody, reverse engineer that. Figure out, well, what is that? What, what made me stand out? And I did. And the number one thing that I heard when I was in the field, number one thing, you don't dress like a salesman. They usually thought I was an attorney or an FBI agent or something like that. There was a way that I carried myself that took me out of that box. I put on a polo, I've got some comfortable kicks on. That doesn't mean I can't be effective as a salesperson doing those things. I know people who are. You're just already, you're, you're, you're getting out of a box a lot slower. Or it's, it's something that you're having to work through. Your goal is to get out of whatever box you've been put in. Part of doing that is create disassociation with whatever that box is. So that you're not judged as a salesperson, but as somebody who's there to help them. Right? You're positioning yourself as an expert to help the person. And, and a lot of those associations is if you have commission breath or you're overly excited about the sale or you're, you're almost combative in your style. And combative in your style might mean like you're like and trying to anticipate every objection and, and, and hand, like quickly handle it. You could end up winning the battle and losing the war. If you've ever been in those situations where you logically beat the person, right? it logically makes sense to them, but they say no to you, what happened? They're not buying you, they don't trust you, which is the bigger part, right? If people trust you, the selling part is super easy. If people trust you, the selling part is super easy. When you lose sales that it makes sense for them, this is gonna kill you, but you need to know this, and it's the same for me, it's the same for anybody. They didn't say no to the fucking product, they said no to you. Something about your vibe, they did not like. And the awareness is learning what that is, and how do I come across in a way that is more trusting? And also, my beard notwithstanding, beards generally work against you. If you have a beard or facial hair, it generally makes you less perceived as less uh, trustable. But it wasn't that how it was kept, though that could have an impact. It was that hiding your face made it made people feel like you had something to hide. That obviously is a cultural thing because there are many cultures in which wearing a beard is normal, right? Like everyone wears a beard. So I'm mostly referring to the United States. Smelling like cigarette smoke decreases your ability to be trusted as well. What's even more interesting about that is that particular study, it didn't even matter whether the person was a smoker or not. Like if you were a fellow smoker and you smelled cigarette smoke on someone else, it didn't change your perception of the lack of trust. This one was a test specifically about cigarette smoke, but yeah, odor definitely matters. Like if you have body odor or if you have bad breath, which is why you owe it to, my, to me and anyone else in here, if they have bad breath, fucking tell them, right? Give them a breath mint, say hey bro. Brush your teeth. Also, to that point, Oral hygiene is a massive turn off or turn on. So there's a book I recommend it. I'll recommend it again and then I'm gonna pivot here. Robert Cialdini, he wrote two books. One is called Presuasion and the other one is Influence. Pre, -suasion. Pre. yeah, it's, 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 it's a play on words, of course. They're both great resources to start to learn how to use psychology for you, not against you. So whether it's in your personal relationships, 
whether it's in your business relationships, whether it's as a leader or a salesperson, so much of the conflict that happens and the resistance happens because we are unrealistic or idealistic about our views of humanity and don't understand human psychology. We idealistically believe it should be different and we play right into it. One of the errors we make is we assume that humans are logical creatures. Humans are not logical creatures. They are emotional creatures. They use logic to back up their emotion. So understand that. You could logically beat somebody, right, in an argument, but they still have to emotionally want to make a decision with you. So if you beat them logically, but there's no emotional connection, that's never happening.